To interpret an NMR spectrum, we need to use a method that will help us to be systematic. Firstly, the context, what do we know already about the molecule? Then how many different proton environments are there in the molecule? And for each proton environment, what can the chemical shift tell us? How many protons are in that environment? And what are the splitting patterns telling us about the numbers of protons on adjacent carbons? We start by looking at the context. What do we know already about the molecule? In this case, the question would tell us that it's an ester. We know this is proton NMR because the chemical shift scale runs from 1 to 11 parts per million. It would be 1 to a couple of hundred parts per million if it was carbon-13 NMR. And lastly, no D2O, so all the hydrogens will be producing NMR signals, even the OH and NH, which would otherwise exchange with D2O, and those signals would otherwise disappear if there was D2O present. Environments, then. There are three proton environments, and I've labelled them A, B and C. And now we need to have a look at the chemical shift for each of those environments. So peak A, chemical shift of 3.7 parts per million. If you look that up on your data sheet, you'll see that environment is a proton on a carbon connected to an oxygen atom. Peak B then, at 2.4 parts per million, that's a hydrogen on a carbon connected to a carbonyl group. And finally, peak C, that's a hydrogen connected to a carbon that's part of an alkyl group. OK, next we need to use the area information. This is the area under each peak, and it tells us how many protons are in that environment. So there are three identical hydrogens in environment A. That makes A a CH3 group next to an oxygen. There are two protons in environment B, so that's a CH2 group next to a carbonyl. And there are three protons in environment C, so that's an alkyl methyl group. So we've got a list of all the fragments of our molecule, and it's now a question of piecing those together, and that's where the splitting helps, because it tells us the sequence of the pieces. PK is a singlet, so there's no carbon connected to the carbon with the hydrogens for PK that has a hydrogen on it, so no hydrogen on an adjacent carbon, and that fits with an oxygen being connected to that carbon. Peak B is a quartet. That tells us there are three hydrogens on the carbon adjacent to this. So it's looking very much like the methyl group is connected to that CH2. And that's confirmed because environment C is a triplet, which tells us there's two hydrogens on the adjacent carbon. And that signature of a triplet and a quartet linked to each other is very char characteristic of an ethyl group. So now we've got all the information necessary to map out the structure of our molecule. We've got methyl, and then the oxygen, then the carbonyl, and then an ethyl group. So this is methyl propanoate. We'll just label which protons are responsible for it, which environment in our molecule, and we can see that it's all self-consistent.